Hello. In this multi-part video tutorial, we're going to use the Flucoma Toolkit to build a two-dimensional sound browser. Uh, in this first video, we're going to look at the slicing function and uh, get our sound slices and play them back individually. And then in the future videos, we'll analyze those sound slices, plot them in 2D space, and then navigate around that space to perform the sound slices. So the sound file that we're going to start with is going to be a drum loop. I'm going to make a, uh, first I'll boot the server here. And I'm going to start with a buffer I'm going to call source. And I'm going to load in this drum loop that is comes with the Flucoma toolkit. It's called Nicole loop E. M stands for mono. And that sounds like this. And now I'm going to use the fluid onset slice object to first listen to what the slicer is doing, and then we'll have uh, a different object slice up that buffer into individual drum slices. So the fluid onset slice object works in real time. So we'll put it in a synth. And what we're going to do is we're going to pass in some audio, and then it's going to tell us where it's finding slice points in that incoming audio stream. And the way it does this is it does a spectral analysis and then looks at adjacent FFT frames and compares how similar or how different they are to each other. And if the difference between them is above a certain threshold, then it will mark that as a distinct enough change to mark it as a slice point. So the audio we'll send in, we'll say will be this drum loop, and then we'll get the slices as a variable here. Uh, for this, I'm going to set the metric to 9, which is a certain type of comparison between adjacent spectral flames, frames. There are many different metrics you can use, uh, as outlined in the help file here. And we'll be choosing this one. And the reason that this one is nice is because the threshold will always be between 0 and 1, so it's easier to tweak the threshold uh, within that range and get a threshold that is useful for us. But I encourage you to check out these other metrics, see which one works the best for the sound you're trying to slice. And for starters, we'll set the threshold to 0 0.5. So now what I want to do is I'm just going to play the drum loop in the left channel and then the slices in the right channel. So we can hear that Fluid Onset Slice is doing a pretty good job of finding where those drum hits are, where the onsets of those drum hits are, and then giving us a little impulse there when it finds it. So in order to do the slicing on this buffer, we're going to use Fluid Onset Slice's non-real-time version, which is Fluid Buff Onset Slice. It's going to do the same process as Fluid Onset Slice, but on a buffer and in non-real-time. So it'll give us back the slice points it finds in the buffer after processing the entire buffer. We'll tell it which server this buffer is on. The source buffer that we wanted to analyze is called source. And then we'll put in the same parameters that we had in the real-time version, fluid onset slice, because we found that those parameters work well for us. So I'll put uh, metric 9 threshold 0 0.5. And then also we need to pass buff onset slice a buffer that it will write the slice points that it finds into. So I'll say indices, which is the argument for specifying this buffer. And I'll make a buffer called indices. And then also I will tell buff onset slice that when it is complete, it should just post for me done. Okay, so that happened very quickly. And now we can go and look at this buffer indices and see where buff onset slice has identified these slice points. So it looks like buff onset slice has found 24 slice points. And if we load those back to the language, we can see that these are all the slice points in samples that buff onset slice has found for us. And there should be 
24 of them. At this point, one thing that might be really useful is to visualize in the buffer where these slices actually take place. So we can do that with the fluid waveform object, which for this case, we'll pass in the audio buffer and the indices buffer, and it'll plot them for us. So the audio buffer here will be our source, and the indices buffer will be our buffer called indices. And we can see that we have the drum loop, and at each one of the slice points identified by fluid buff on said slice, we have a red line showing us where that slice point is in relation to the drum hits. So one thing we might do here is we might tweak the threshold either up or down and try to get it so that these uh, red lines where these slice points are identified match our perception of where we think the slice points should be. So now what we can do is we can use these slice points to play back these individual drum slices. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna make a function called play slice that's going to receive as an argument an index. And this index is going to be the index of the slice, the drum slice that I want to play back. So if I pass in a index of zero, I'm going to want this synth that we'll make to start playing at this sample position and stop playing at this sample position. And then if I pass in an index of one, I will want this synth to start playing the, the buffer at this sample position and stop playing at this sample position. So one easy way to do this is to use this index to look up in our buffer called indices what sample positions are in the buffer at that index. So I might call the start samp is going to be index.kr in the indices buffer and the index that I'm going to start playing from. And then I could also find the stop samp, which will be also in the buffer called indices, but rather than being at the index I'm passing in, it'll be at the index plus one, just the next index in that buffer. So now I have the start and stop positions. I'm gonna use that to play back my sound file. And I'll do that by creating a phaser object. Uh, I don't need to trigger it. The rate should be, uh, the rate should be buff rate scale for this buffer. And then I'm gonna start it at start samp and end it at stop samp. And then my signal will be And then lastly, what I wanna do is I wanna make sure that once we're done playing that section of the buffer, we're actually gonna stop playback and kill the synth. So I'll make an envelope. And I'll give it a little ramp. So I'll go from zero, one, one, zero. And then for times, I will say uh, 0 0.03, 30 millisecond ramp up, quite long, but it'll sound nice hopefully for all of our sounds here. I'm gonna compute this value in just a moment, but I'll call this uh, dir seconds minus 0 0.06, and then I'll make the fade out 0 0.03. And the 0 0.06 is because I'm accounting for the fact that however long my slice is in seconds, I should take off 60 milliseconds to account for the fact that I have 30 milliseconds on each side that I'm using as the fades. So then I will say done action should be two, which when this envelope is done playing, it'll kill the synth. I need to compute the dir seconds. And I can do that by simply going the stop samp minus the start samp, which will give me the duration in samples. And then I need to take that and divide it by the sample rate of the buffer. Then the sound I want to hear is going to be my signal. We'll make it in stereo times my envelope. So now if I define this function, come down here and say play slice index zero, we get the zeroth sound slice being played right there. If I say play one, and what I can do here is I can just say that I want to take uh, the indices dot num frames minus one 
dot do pass that in here in between each sound slice maybe I'll just wait for one second And there are all of my drum slices. The reason I used minus one right here is because my indices buffer will actually have one fewer sound slice in it than there are slice points. And we can imagine if I have five slice points and I have a start and a stop, a start and a stop, a start and a stop, that would actually give me one, two, three, four slices, even though I have five slice points. So when I iterate through the slices, I wanna use one fewer than there are frames in the indices buffer. So at this point, there's a few things you could do. You could check out more slicers in Flucoma. There's also the fluid buff novelty slice, the fluid buff transient slice, and the fluid buff amp slice, as well as the fluid buff amp gate, which will give you gate information, uh, meaning that it will provide a position where there is an onset and a position where there is an offset of a sound. And lastly, now that we have this drum loop sliced up and we, we can play each of the sound slices by passing the index to a function, we could trigger those sound slices in different ways, reorganizing them, causing them to glitch or remixing this beat.